We have a lot to do, and I don't even really know where to start. <laughs> but we do have Will on the team, so let's take a look at Will here. Skills, writing software, finding compromising evidence. That's good. Using surveillance hardware, hacking people. 196,000 a month. Is he our highest paid? We saved his freaking life. Oh no, it's Jerry. No, no, 184. I feel like Clint is the biggest steal. Alvaro's pretty good too, though. Um, in 2010, he exposed the program which was surveilling American citizens. Soon after he had to flee to Venezuela, CIA spent 10 years trying to get to him. But in 2021, he managed to return home and avoid arrest. Thanks to us. So we're at 74.8%. 2.7 million. We're, we got six, six more months to go. And then another 6 million to convince the businessmen. I think I gotta, I gotta step it up here. Money's the most important thing. Promises. Ah, yes, we completed all of our promises, so that's good. Um, I, th oh, I should take a look at our administration. Will Will do a better job as Treasury Secretary? Team members are paid 35% less at the end of every month. Team members' actions increase stress points by two more. I don't think so. We definitely want that money. 3.5% rating is at the end of every month. Yeah, I think we're good with uh, with what we have going on here. Uh, okay, let's start from the top. Snotty Joe, lure the journalist who is bothering you at press conferences to your side. Are they just doing coke during the press conference? <laughs> what is going on? Uh, Ellie's here. I needed to get Tony's signature on something, and while he was at it, he regaled me with all his service stories from the past 10 years. I did that I needed to go, but he wouldn't give the piece of paper until I'd heard the whole story. And you know, mixed it with plenty of absurd conspiracy theories about the leadership of the FBI, there was one item that intrigued me. Have you ever heard of Snotty Joe? That's the nickname of Joe Lynn, who likes to harass you with insolent questions at press conferences. Oh, I remember. Rumor has it that a few years ago, Face dug up something incriminating on him and turned Joe from an independent journalist into an obliging footman, ready to throw dirt at his master's enemies. So here's what I figured. If there really is incriminating evidence on Joe and we could find out what it is, then we could use it. Ideally, we'd be able to force Joe to work for us and direct his energy at something useful. Otherwise, he'll be driving us nuts for the next four years. Find some dirt on Joe or show to join your side. Well, Will, uh, Will was good at that, right? Finding compromising evidence. Let's give it a go. Let's give Will a first try. Behind the scenes negotiations, persuasion, maybe. Jerry. Behind the scenes negotiations, nah. Oh, Alta and Alvaro are really stressed out, eh? Let's throw Tien in here, too. I'm wondering, that nickname Snotty Joe, is it because he looks like a kid, or is there something more serious behind it? Don't laugh, even a small detail might lead us to the dirt we're looking for. We need to watch Joe. He regularly attends press briefings. Oh, he's Snotty Joe because he's freaking sniffing cocaine. <laughs> we need to watch Joe. He regularly attends press briefings at the White House. But I think we'll be more likely to find out what he has to hide if we watch him in a more relaxed environment. Or we could just ask about Joe through our normal channels. What do you want to do? So Will can tap Joe's phone for tea stress. Tien can ask around and find out what people say about Joe. Discuss Snotty Joe's nickname with his employer. Let's ask around. Mr. President, there was no need to even open an investigation. I quickly learned from my colleagues that Snotty Joe is heavily addicted to cocaine, hence the nickname. He sniffles as if he always has a cold. Okay. I mean, I could figure that out just by this picture here. I knew there was a reason people call Joe Snotty, but the whole thing turned out to be so obvious. People can be so predictable sometimes. Well, anyway, the important thing is that we now have all the information we need to pressure Joe and make him work for our interests. How do you want to do? How do you want this to go? 
Promise to share classified information with Joe. Promise Joe access to diplomatic grade cocaine if he agrees to work for us. <laughs> Diplo what is diplomatic grade cocaine? <laughs> Invite Joe to work together. Offer Joe access to sensitive diplomatic information in exchange for his cooperation. I think we invite him. Of course, he knew who I was, and as soon as I invited him to work together for you, he immediately agreed. However, the compensation he wanted was way too high. This Lin sure thinks highly of himself. Highly! Well, that worked out all right. Now Joe is on our side. I just wonder for how long. <laughs> Mr. President, they explained to me that if I don't stop asking you uncomfortable questions at press conferences, then the police will start asking me some uncomfortable questions of their own. I must admit, I am in a difficult situation. You have all the evidence you need to nail me and face this quickly losing influence. If you wanted, I'd probably be spending the night in jail, but you have other plans for me, right? By the way, sir, now that we are partners, I will share with you the contact of a journalist interviewer who will be able to raise your rating. Nice. Drugs are very bad. <laughs> I use drugs myself and I don't advise you to. Drugs make you vulnerable. It's better to play sports. Even video games don't hurt as much. Uh, uh, I don't like any of these choices. It's better to play sport. I don't know. Even smoking is bad in the White House. Personally, I haven't touched a cigarette in two years. And how do you relax? Give advice on what to do if you know a drug addict. I'm not really happy with that tweet, but we're going with it. The president has a point. Screw drug addicts. If your friend is an addict, I pity you. What did you even say here? <laughs> Tabala's got me. I don't know. What, I don't know what we just said. <laughs> What did we get out of this? We got the evidence, I guess, and an ally. Oh, he's actually a team member and a ratings bump. The president is gradually establishing regular processes in the White House. Every week, he seems more and more confident in the Oval Office chair. So it's Joe Lynn. Jack Steele, director of the Propane Association. Mr. President, the barbecue season is almost upon us. I personally think a juicy steak cooked over open fire is the best thing ever. I remember though, how President Face would roast his meat over wood or coals. The heathen! A good cut of beef doesn't need any smoke. Would you like to set an example for all good Americans that need a propane grill for your first presidential barbecue? Our association would be grateful beyond all measures if you did. This sounds like we could get some money. Uh oh. Adriano Marino of Sergio Marconi's pre a personal assistant. Or is Sergio Marconi's personal assistant? Do we know who Sergio Marconi is? Mr. President, I'm here on behalf of Sergio Marconi. My client may be spoken of as a shady mafia boss, but I personally know him to be a generous philanthropist. For one reason or another, many businessmen and officials don't like being known as acquaintances of Mr. Marconi, which hurts my client deeply. If you acknowledge Mr. Marconi on the official donor role of your charity foundation, he'll transfer a nice amount to your account. We accept the check, Mr. President. Yes. <laughs> I know that's going to hit us. That's going to we're going to pay for that, but we need the cash. It's our ass on the line. Oh, hacking the diplomats. That's right. Noah, Mr. President, if you haven't yet tried buffalo wings. That, oh, right, right. We already we already read this. Do I want to do this? Hold on, let me look at the other ones. Is it going to involve hacking? Witch hunt? Tony says that there are still leaks coming from the White House. Figure out what's going on. I have to send them on vacation. I think. Still not sure the best, like the best timing on this. 
<laughs> Mr. President, Mr. Marconi, my client is deeply touched by your decision. Who's talking about bribes? It was a mere goodwill gesture by Mr. Marconi. The media may claim otherwise, but we all know this is nothing but filthy lies, don't we? Sure. 700,000. It was worth it. We didn't lose that much approval rating, I'd say. Um, Get your former business partner out of jail. So as a representative who's out for your blood. Okay, let's send Will. He's the only one that could do this anyways. He's gone for a time, though. All right, which hunt it is. If someone coughs in the smoking room, it's all over social media within the hour. And things are leaking from everywhere. Your phone conversations are being reported, the agendas of meetings, even information about back-channel negotiations. One time I was using foul language in my office, and a couple days later I read all about it in Just DC. Vice President Estaba is out of control. Yes, we're public figures now, so we're always under the microscope. But it's getting to be too much. Whoever this new mole is, they're making it impossible to get any work done. It's time we smoke them out. I thought we figured out that it was Alta. Uh, but we can't just solve the problem by going to court or talking to the media. You'll have to keep a close eye on everybody personally. What is Joe all about? Writing articles, deception, speaking with journalists, public attacks. Jerry. Hmm. Let's send Joe on this. Connections. Maybe Jerry? The leaks are going to our old friend from Just DC, that arrogant journalist, Joanna Rizzuto. The one who's always harassing you with his stupid questions at your press conferences. I don't think there's any way we can make that snake talk. She'll just pretend he's got some profession. He's got some professional ethics and refuse to betray his source. We'll need to take a different approach. Will you trust to find the new mole? Oh, right. Okay. This is like, we're going to increase the stress by one point. That's why, that's why uh, he's here. With Joe, ask Rizzuto about the source of her insider knowledge. With Jerry, threaten to bring the administration staff up on criminal charges. Threaten to bring Rizzuto up on charges unless she reveals the source of the leaks. Speak to Rizzuto personally and convince her to reveal. Let's go with Joe, because it doesn't cost much. Mr. President, me and jo uh, Joanna are old acquaintances, so she's always eager to talk to me. One bottle of wine and she was ready to tell me anything. She said that many White House employees frequent a certain woman. This woman is a fortune teller. She lives near the intersection of 21st and P Street and gains her knowledge directly from your subordinates. No one has any clue uh, that this whole operation is set up solely to learn what's going on inside the White House. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> so it turns out we didn't just have one rat, but a whole nest of them right under our noses. Well, let's smash that fortune teller's glass ball and mix up her tarot cards or whatever she uses. It'll be easier to deal with our chatty fortune teller than to debrief each employee individually. So buddy, it's time we put an end to our detailed visions of what's happening in the White House. Any ideas how we should handle it? Jerry looks like the man for the job. Check the fortune teller's immigration status. Threaten the fortune teller with a criminal charge for illegal business activity. Bring Natasha over to our side. What can Joe do? Write an in-depth article disclosing all Natasha's secrets. Write an in-depth article about the presidential administration's fascination, fascination with the occult. Let's bring her over. Mr. President, I explained to Mrs. Natasha that she might run into trouble if she doesn't start talking about which administration staff members were visiting her. But in response, she only show, showered me with the most shocking curses. She said my office would burn down along with all the papers inside. Then she just hung up. But I said Jerry would do it, not you. Immigration status? Boss, I found out that Natasha is living in the United States illegally. Her residence would seem to involve some forged documents. 
but uh, this still has yet to be established. In all likelihood, her real name isn't even Natasha. I made the appropriate calls, and the police and immigration are already looking into her. I wonder if she predicted that she'd soon be returning to her native country. <laughs> hey man, I just had a thought. If Natasha doesn't want to return to her homeland, maybe we could offer her a job? Easy work after all. White House employees tell her all the gossip, and Natasha comes and tells us. You see what I mean? We'll hear all kinds of crazy stuff. And be able to fix problems before they get out of hand. Uh, great idea, Tony. Let's do it. This is what I wanted to do anyways. Then I'll get one of our people to talk to her. She'll be happy to play along if she doesn't want to be deported. Okay. Oh, and then we could write an in-depth article about the presidential administration's fascination with the occult to get her on our side. Mr. President, I wrote a powerful article about your administration's addiction to fortune tellers, shamans, and other charlatans. I'm afraid this isn't just going to hit the rank and file at the White House. Some of it will come off on you. But at least you'll be sure of one thing. Your staff will be watching what they say going forward. Man, we did it! White magic has won the day! For a week straight, there haven't been any more leaks from the presidential administration. Unless you approve it first. Now I can finally relax and talk calmly in the hallway without looking over my shoulder. This fortune teller was so uh, frightened that she gave us the folder with the data she had collected. Fascinating read, my friend. Write another post. Uh, okay, do I believe in magic? Do I believe in magic? I believe that anything is possible in America. Um... But I do know that fate is always on the side of the strongest. Uh... Think with your own head so that you don't have to answer with it. Okay. <laughs> so you better go to your government for advice. So don't trust your secrets to any charlatans. I don't think that makes any sense either, but fine. Someone get the president his pills. The main charlatans are in the government. Magic is real. The dark harvest is coming. <laughs> what are we saying? We are losing our mind. Wouldn't you lose your mind if you were doing this job? Our readers keep asking why there's been so few rumors coming from the White House lately. The fact is the administration is under information lockdown and the people are simply afraid to speak. Huh. I guess it might be beneficial to only send people on vacation after you've used them in a week or a month, sorry. Oh, we lost 1.9 and then we gained 0.8. Okay, well, we're pretty much even. Our, our approval rating is pretty high anyways. It's money that I'm worried about. Oh, it's Warmonger here, Director of National Intelligence. Sir, I must say I'm impressed with Vice President Estaba. He may be working with your administration, but he still remembers a thing or two about surveillance. I suppose Federal Bureau training is like riding a bicycle. You never forget. Just to be sure you're up to speed, Mr. Estaba uncovered some flaws in our security system and expose the incompetence of five agents. We fire them on the spot, sir. So you have nothing to worry about going forward. Unfortunately, by slipping through our surveillance, the vice president has jeopardized his own safety. If we have no idea where Mr. Estaba is, then we cannot protect him. I know that you and your vice president are under a lot of pressure, but you always feel like you could talk to him, right? Why trust you? You're awful at your job. Ask Ellie for help. She knows how to keep Tony in line. But one of your agents in Tony's social circle. I'd advise that the agent is up to speed with conspiracy theories and pretends to believe in at least a few of them. I think Ellie can help with that. Thank you, sir. I will do that. I hope she can help us come to an understanding with the vice president. Greta Fitzpatrick, the executive director at Sun Water Air Solid. Sun Water Air Solid. Okay, Mr. President, I'm adamant a true man of today wouldn't be getting involved with oil or coal. Sensible thing would be to invest in the inexhaustible power of the sun. Mr. Face already did just that. He wrote us a check for a hefty amount, hoping our nice dividends, hoping for nice dividends, sorry, 
Would you also be interested in backing the great American solar farm that's poised to start covering the energy needs of Texas in full very soon? I think we're spending money for approval ratings. Loretta Gonzalez, captain of the Border Patrol Service. Sir, that piece of wall on the Mexican border is more trouble than it's worth. We've got to patrol the unfenced areas, the construction warehouses, and the wall itself. And the wall, by the way, is being climbed over by everybody in both directions. Don't even get me started on the illegals who fooled my guys a couple of times by pretending to be workers. Maybe you could order a halt to the construction that Mr. Face initiated? Yes. <laughs> just, just so we can stick it to face. Buddy! Antonio here. Can't you see there's no one in the whole administration brave enough to stand up to you? Meanwhile, the bad vibes aren't going anywhere. According to Sands, this is a potentially volatile situation. Don't worry, though. I know just the way to help people let off steam. How about getting a punching dummy, dummy that looks like you for our gym? Everyone would be allowed to clobber it at any time, and that'd work just as well as group therapy. Do you mind your rubber likeness absorbing some of the people's wrath? Uh, yes, I would mind. Wait, did I just pay for that? Or not? I Did I say yes to his proposal or did I say yes to his question? <laughs> Jim Bull, governor of New Mexico. I didn't see, I didn't see if our money went down. Mr. President, I've been presented a report on unemployment growth in New Mexico yesterday, and it's concerning. Turns out one person in five subsists on food stamps here. We've got to act on that ASAP. The best course of action would be to ban employers from getting info from police databases. So what if a guy stole some trifle or got caught DUI? This doesn't mean he'd be a suspect employee, right? Everyone deserves a second chance. What would you say to signing executive order to classify the law enforcement records? Yes. I don't know. I don't know what to answer to that. Got two more things to do. Tian and Jerry are pretty freaking stressed out. Curb the congresswoman. So it's a representative who's out for blood. I thought we already got him out of jail. Oh, it's a different billionaire. I don't think that guy was a billionaire. Um, the guy who's after us. Vice President at Zanmi. Mr. President, I'm turning to you out of desperation. Food Park, my father, founder of Zanmi Corporation, and your former business partner was kidnapped. Reliable sources tell me the Chinese government is behind it. Dad is currently held at their embassy while they're waiting for a good opportunity to haul him off. The blasted interview he gave to Sands. He really shouldn't have called Chinese laws ravings of doddering old commies. Maybe you have someone strong who wouldn't be afraid of the guards and would try breaking into the embassy to get dad out? Fu Park always pays his debts, and you know that better than anyone. I think it's time to bring in the big guns. Conrad. I can't believe, brother, but I'm gonna need to work for you again. Got the law on my back. They're gonna lock me back up if I don't pay a fine for a robbery case. I'll give you uh, me money to buy them off. Or will you give me money to buy them off? Sure. I recognize you acted like a brother. So just like before, I'm ready for anything. I'll squeeze or beat anyone. You just tell me who. All right. Loretta Gonzalez, plus 0.2%. Sir, thank you for putting an end to this border construction nonsense. You have no idea how comforting it is to know that the checkpoints on the edges of the wall won't have to be moved in a month. Benefits not only us, but the entire federal budget. The IQ Journal just came out with a colorful infographic on this topic. A multi-story house made of money you save for America with your wise decisions. Damn right. Buddy, that punching dummy plan was perfect. Uh... Dearly, too bad I didn't see what happened coming. I mean, that video with the rubber, you... That's why I said don't do it! You asked me if it would bother me and I said yes! That's okay, we got minus one stress. For point three, that, that's fine. It's very important that they word the uh, questions correctly. Okay, so uh, let's save the billionaire with Conrad. 
Conrad is good at physical threats, robbery, persuasion, and assassination. Okay, so Alvaro probably would have been better. Then curb the congresswoman. Martha Lupin, Speaker of the House of Representatives, says, Sir Helena Rogers, a representative from New Mexico, kept dragging you through the mud every time she spoke in the last few months. Her characterizations of you range from racist to man-eater. She was slamming your migration uh, policy and reluctance to relax the U.S.-Mexico border. Cr I just stopped the building of the wall. I mean, it's all well and good, but there. Uh, but here I've got some info that contradicts her sob story with all those poor immigrant parents and a brother killed during a conflict with the border guard. She might be hoaxing us to claim some unearned political brownie points. Wouldn't it be a good idea to keep an eye on this Helena before her lip gets us into hot water? If you could send someone with experience in private investigation after her, there'd probably be some nice dirt to dig up on her. Maybe Joe. Clint. Private investigation. Alvaro maybe would have been good for that. Let's try Joe. He's an investigator. He's a journalist. Okay, we're good for this week. We're going to have to spend a lot of money paying people. Okay, our approval rating went down a bit. Money went down. We're paying 826,000 in salaries. Holy crap. I'm gonna have to make, I think I'm probably gonna get rid of Jerry. 